excited to be back. I was away for a conference last week, um, but now I'm here and uh, they're so far away, I'm not gonna be able to see what everybody's saying. But I'm gonna share real quick and then maybe I can move it a little bit closer so that I can see. Um, let's see. So make sure you check in with me and tell me how you're doing, um, where you're at, what's going on. We are finally getting sun here, which is nice because it's been a minute. And um, yeah, so I'm excited about that. I planted all my stuff the other day and um, then it froze like twice. So I have a feeling that all of my um, plants are going to die. <clears throat> and you know what? I feel like it's probably, they've done something so I can't see the comments. Okay, hold on. Let me share this and then, and then we'll get started. And I'll move the camera just so you can see a little bit better and I can see your comments because I think it's turned off. I think I have to hit it on the bottom now, which I didn't have to do before. They're always making changes on me. So today you might be able to see I've got all my scraps here. Um, we're going to do some scrap busting, which I'm super excited about. I love playing with my scraps. Oh, I can't see your comments. Good morning. Good morning, Cindy. Good morning, Marsha. <laughs> Sorry, it's a little far. I need to uh, fix it so it's closer. So we're gonna be doing some scraps today, which I love working with scraps. Um, good morning, Tracy. Good morning, Deborah. <laughs> My eyes aren't that good. It's a little bit too far away. Um, and then while I'm talking, I have, um, I want you guys to know that I have a group called Sewing School and it's gotten really big lately. So I'm over there a lot. Um, and you can just search sewing school in the search bar of Facebook and ask to join and I'll approve you. But make sure you answer the questions because I'm like nervous about spammers. So I haven't been approving everybody if they don't um, answer the questions because I really want to make sure we have only good people in there who really want to learn to sew and aren't just trying to use everyone um, to share their spammy stuff. So um, you should definitely join and I'm almost done here just sharing really quick um, and then so I was at my conference which was um, in Salt Lake City which was fun super fun and I really enjoyed um, and I actually taught a class on Facebook live because um, most people are really really terrified about it um, so it was fun to do that let me I just move this a little closer so I can see you guys okay Oh yay! Hi Melissa, I'm glad you can comment. My, I'm just, I'm like, it'll be just a little too high if I move it up too much. But let's see if I can make this work because I want to be able to see what you guys are saying. So sorry, this is really annoying, I know, like having to watch me do this. But I was in a hurry and I wanted to make sure that I could, I think that's that'll be a little better. You might be able to see the tripod though and it might be a little crooked. Oh, that's the wrong way. There we go. How's that? Is that better? I think that's better, and I think I'll be able to see. It's just a touch closer. Sorry, that was really annoying. Okay. So, I'm almost done. This is my last one, and then we'll get started. I'm sure I have... Oh, no. I bet I have one more. So, like I said, we're going to be working on um, scrap busters today. We're going to be using our scraps. Um, so, if you want to pull those out, you can, or you can just do it later. Um, and we're going to be making some coasters, which are fun. And I have to tell you the link in the description only has one picture because I did this post, like originally I did this post when I started blogging and I was like, Oh, let's do those. Cause it'll be fun. And I love working with scraps. And then I went back and looked at it this morning and I was like, Oh my God, that's the worst thing ever. The pictures are absolutely horrible. So I deleted every single picture in the post except for the one for pinning, which I did, took new because I couldn't handle it. So I took a new photo this morning for you to pin. So when you go there, pin it, and then come back if you want to see the pictures. But you'll have the video too. So save this video to your wall so you can find it later, and then the pictures will be on the post later. Because I couldn't, I just couldn't, I couldn't even handle it. Like, it was too much. So, um, so that's what is happening over there if you see that it's like really wonky and there's no um, pictures if you're wondering why it's weird. Okay, I'm done sharing.
So I'm gonna tell you what we're gonna use. We are gonna use our scraps, which I've already said, but you could also just cut strips. Um, oh, it didn't notify you? Oh no, that's no good. Well, make sure you sign up again to get notified. I don't know if, if, you, if you're holding your phone like this, it probably won't show up, but if you turn your phone, you'll be able to see get notified and it'll say share with your friends or whatever. So if you turn your phone so that it's, I'm a small screen and there's some white space underneath, you, it'll show you where it'll let you turn on notifications. In case you were wondering, that's also the place you can swipe to get rid of the comments. So if you hate seeing the comments and they distract you when you're trying to watch, you can swipe them away. Um, I think you can do it not on that screen, but it show, it tells you how to do it on that screen. So when the screen is turned. Okay, I think that's the housekeeping. And I know it's a little bit crooked, but I'm not gonna mess with the, I'm not gonna mess with it anymore. And I have to have my phone on me because my son had surgery two days ago and I sent him back to school today, so I'm a little paranoid. So if my phone rings, that's why. <laughs> um, he's totally fine, by the way, but I'm just, you know, a paranoid mom. So he was like running around crazy, like attacking his brother yesterday. So he's, he's fine, but you know how it is. Okay. So what we're going to use today is all our scraps, um, on the, on the post. Um, oh, well, I'm glad you did, Jennifer. I am so happy that you remembered and you came and found me. <laughs> so on the post is a template for a circle if you want, but you can also just use a CD. It's the same size. So, um, Hi Debbie. You can use a CD and it's the same size and that's what I'm using because I my printer ran out of ink. So I was going to print it but my printer ran out of ink and so we're using a CD. But you can print the template on the blog if you're worried about it or you don't have these lying around because we don't all have them anymore do we? Um, <clears throat> so I need, you need the circle template, your scraps. I'm using Heat and Bond. Oh thank you Linda. I'm using Heat and Bond, um, fusible fleece, but you can use whatever um, interfacing or batting you wanted, but I like this one because it fuses, which makes it so much easier um, when I'm sewing so I don't have to like pin it or whatever. I like the fusible, so that's what I'm using for this. Heat and Bond Fusible Fleece. There's links for all of this in the blog post in the description of the video, so you don't have to write it down if, right now if you don't want to. Of course, my wonder clips because I couldn't live without these. Um, and I've already cut my fleece into circles. Also, I'm going to be using my rotating whiskers mat because it's easy with these small little scrap things, my scissors, and my rotor cutter. And I'm using my heat, my heat and press, um, but you could just use your iron because I'm just using it to press the pieces in between steps. So I think that's all the supplies, and I think we're ready to go. I, I think I'm going to do a pink one because I made the blue coaster on, for the post, so I think I'm going to do pink, and I see a lot of pink sitting here hanging out. So I'm just going to grab, you know, whichever ones you want. And you could, I mean, you could do all colors. You can make it rainbow. You can do, I mean, literally you could do anything. And any scraps you have is fine. Um, <clears throat> so I think we'll do a pink. And I think I'm seeing a lot of lighter pink. So this has got to go. And this can stay. Okay. And the other thing, you can either make two and do them back to back for for it or you can make one scrappy and then do a backing of like the pink so maybe we'll do the pink backing a bright pink backing and a scrappy front but you could do both and you could do both just plain fabric you don't have to do scraps so you could just cut two circles and then follow the steps after the after this and you'd be good so lots of options as always you know I like my options I like to share my options with you and I'm just gonna this is a wonky one so I'm just gonna cut a piece off of it so in the blog post I said, there's really only one rule, okay, okay two, two rules when you make these. Um, and the first rule is that you sew two straight edges together. So <laughs> that's all we need really. So I cut this one just so it has a straight edge. That's all I did to it. And this has a straight edge. Everything you want to have, you're, you're sewing two straight edges together, but it could be diagonal, it could be circular on the other side, it really doesn't matter. You just want to have a straight edge to put them together. So, and you don't have to cut, you can cut before or after. Oh, great. Well, we'll see you later then, Linda. <laughs> um, you can cut before or after. You can trim up before or after, but it's up to you. And then I just like to make sure, as in all quilting, that it's flat before I go. So my, this wasn't hot, but I'm going to see if it'll, has any heat left over from this morning. 
So I rushed through doing one of these this morning so that I could have a picture for you guys to pin because I can't even tell you how bad it was. It was so, so bad. <laughs> um, it's when, you know, you it's kind of like looking back at like what you wore in the 90s and you're like, oh my gosh, did I really wear that? Did I really think that was good? Like, ah, good morning, Mary. So um, it's one of those things where I looked back and I was like, oh no, that's bad. But <laughs> I guess that's good. It means I'm learning and progressing and things over there are getting better. Things on the blog are looking much better than they did back then. So yeah. <laughs> okay. So I'm just going to scooch this, bring this in and I'm just going to, I'm just using, like I said, a straight edge and I'll cut this at the end. So I'm going to put this straight edge with this straight edge. Um, the, this is my easy press, my Cricut easy press. Probably don't want that on the um, I, there's a, uh, is there a link for it? I will get you a link for it, but it's just like an iron. You could also just use your iron. I just really, it's nice because it has the pressing board right here. I can just do it and be done. So I'm just finding two straight edges and I'm going to sew them together. Right like so. <clears throat> and I'm using a blue thread. So I used a pink thread on my blue, um, my blue coaster. So I'm going to use a blue thread on my pink coaster. And I'm just using the quarter inch seam. And I'm not even really going to backstitch because we're going to quilt over this and you're going to trim up a bunch off. Um, come on. Why are you being cranky? There we go. Okay. This one's kind of a... You, I feel like you kind of need a lot of space. Good morning, Donna. You're still kind of a touch far away, so I can't really see. And this pressing mat is nice because then I can just put it right on top. So the second rule is press in between. So... The first rule I said for these, really because there's only two rules, is that you have a straight edge. So you want to put two straight edges together. The second rule is just press. Just like you would in quilting. When you're making any quilt block, you press just so that it's not really, really wonky. So I'm just pressing. And this is my easy press. And the pressing mat that goes, it's actually separate, I think, but it goes with it. It's nice. But you could use this on an iron, ironing board, or um, you guys probably, I used to use it on a uh, towel on my mat here so and this isn't hot at all which is nice so I am just going to straighten things out here just gonna square it up so I want to square this side first and there's really no rhyme or reason you could square it up however you want um, and it doesn't have to be square like I said it just has to be straight so we just want it to be straight and then I will just take this one as well, and I'll, I'm going to give it just a diagonal just to show you what it'll look like. We'll make our own diagonal. So here's the piece I've got now. I've just put two scraps together. Then we'll grab another scrap. I'm going to do one of these strips, and it's mostly fine, so I'm not even going to press it. And then I'm just going to sew it on right here. Can you see the sewing machine? And then, so just our two straight edges together. And you can see they don't have to be straight, I mean, they don't have to be like square, they just have to be straight. Because it's too confusing to try and do, I mean, you could, I guess you could do circles and stuff, but since we mostly talk about beginner projects and easy projects, we're doing it in a, um, we're doing it in a straight line rather than any sort of curves or anything. Let's press our seam here. Super fun, super easy. And you can do as many of these at a time as you want. And then I love this. Spin it around, really nice, and square it up. So I'm just taking off the extra. I'm not even, I guess squaring isn't even the right word. I'm just taking it so that I have that straight edge. So here's what we've got now. And I also love these because no two will be the same. You'll have something different going on every time. Um, I'm gonna put, okay, here we go. I'm gonna put this 
Oh, thank you so much, Monica. I miss you too. How are you? I missed you when you were, my friend Monica used to go to snap with me and now she's abandoned me. <laughs> um, so it's nice to see you. Okay, so I'm just gonna try and give myself a square edge here. So I'm just throwing this on the top. So we're just kind of like, I don't know what, what you would even call it, just free for all. It's a free for all type thing to get these things together. Okay, so we've added that on. I'll press this. There's a lot of moving parts. So if you have like a setup where you can stand up and get to your ironing board or whatever you're using, might be better than moving everything all around, but I want to, you guys to be able to see everything. So just, and it doesn't take a lot, just a quick press is fine. The easy press is nice because it's like a, a steady temperature, so it's always that temp. Um, it maintains its temperature, whereas an iron, like, it's just, even just on, on the iron, it's a different temperature everywhere you go, which is weird. So then I'm just, I'm just, so I added a big corner so that I could have a straight piece, straight edge. So here's what I've got so far. Morning. Oh, I'm always jealous when you guys tell me you're in Europe because I always wanted to go visit like Scotland and Ireland and I mean I've been in England but for like a minute in the airport when I was on my way to France. But all those places, I wanna to go to all of them. So here's what we've got so far. Looks like this, so fun scraps. And then I'm just gonna put probably one more, I'll put this strip at the bottom and I think we'll probably have enough. And it doesn't have to be square even, like, um, it doesn't have to be a square. It just has to be big enough that your, um, that your template fits over it. So it just has to be big enough for a circle. So don't worry too much about making it square because a lot of this is actually going to get cut off. <laughs> um, because we're just trying to make a circle. <clears throat> so you want to kind of focus on that center bit. Hi Shelly! That circle, the middle. Oh, yeah, we should go. We'll leave our kids, Shelly, and we'll just go. We can find someone on here who will let us just crash at their house. <laughs> so I'm taking anybody who wants to let me come crash. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> kind of. No, I am. <laughs> okay, so then I'm just going to press this. Yeah, I had all these plans yesterday to get so much done and then I kept my son home. Good morning, Lucy, how are you? I kept my son home because he had surgery the day before. They were like, he can go to school tomorrow, but I was way too terrified. Um, and then he drove me crazy as they do when they're home from school because he was perfectly fine and normal. And uh, so I was like, ah, you're going to school tomorrow. So let's just grab our, you know, this is really technical measuring device oh I'll come to your house too save me a, save me a couch okay I'll be there <laughs> so you can see this is big enough now for our high-tech measuring template so I'm just gonna stop and I'm not even gonna square this because I don't care um, I'm just gonna it doesn't matter just cut it off so this is what we ended up with it's just a little and like I said like so I'm gonna use this section so I get the most scraps and this mostly will just be cut off, but I'm going to use this right there to trace. And we're going to sew so we can, um, sew, sew, I'm going to say sew a few more times. <laughs> so we don't have to, um, you can use a marker, it's fine, because we're going to cut and it's no big deal. So I'm just going to trace it. And you can, 
like I said, there's the template is on my blog if you want to print it. Um, or I put an SVG in there too if you're a Cricut person. So you can throw this, throw a couple of these on your pink mat. I would put them the seam side down, so right side up on your pink mat, and then cut with your rotary cutter if you want to use your Cricut. There's an SVG in there too for that. So, um, good morning, Pamela. So that's what, um, that's what you should do. So I've just traced it on here. And then I'm going to do this pink for the back. So I'm just going to, we'll make sure, first of all, it's big enough. I'm just going to um, put these together <clears throat> and cut them out, cut it out. Maybe not, because I'm, it's not going to, I'm not going to do that. I lied. I totally lied, so don't be mad. Okay. Because I want to make sure, I just want to cut it nicely, so I'm not doing that. So I'm going to trace it on here, too. Okay, I know. And the nice thing about this easy press is that it's like, it won't let you forget. It doesn't let you forget it. It's like, I'm here, and I'm turning off because you probably forgot me, and it's hot. And I don't want to burn your house down, so... That's nice compared to the iron, which I know some irons turn off on their own as well, but thank you for, thank you Cricut Easy Press for making my life easy. It just lets you know, which is also nice because if I don't want it to turn off, I can just press the button real quick and it'll turn on, it'll stay on, but I didn't, I turned it off. So I'm just cutting out my circles real easy, not super. As long as the two are the same, it doesn't really matter. And circular, right? Okay. And this is nice because you can just use, like, use all your pink scraps or mix them all together. Like rainbow, scrappy coasters would be super fun. You could also do, like, a string quilting, um method for these and they would be super pretty just cut them to a circle um i shared a video not that long ago on my facebook page for string quilting that was super fun um so you can use that method and then just cut it into a circle it's fun to do different things with your quilt box and and then you could use like you could use this and just add another thing add a strip here and you'd have another one you'd be ready to go so don't throw this away either you can keep going and add more add more scraps to it to make to do it again <clears throat> okay so we've got our circles we've got the front and back and like I said you could do a scrappy one on the back too so it's reversible or just pink or just a backing it's fine up to you and somewhere under all these scraps, okay, here we go. We've got our, um, and I turn this off and I don't, I wasn't done. I always do that. Okay, so we've got, this is our fusible fleece. And one side is a little bit shiny. I know you probably can't see, and the other side is really smooth. So the shiny, kind of rougher side is where the, um, um, the rough one is where the, the adhesive is. I think you're talking about the group I was talking about. It's called Sewing School. I can, I'll give you a link for that too. I'll throw in a link here when, um, when I'm done. So I'm just going to put my fleece down and one layer of fleece, um, is kind of a thin coaster, which you could totally do and is totally fine, but I'm going to just put a second one down. Um, and I'm going to fuse them both to the same side like that. So I've got two layers of the fleece and then my front piece and a fair amount of my own hair as well. <laughs> and then I'm just going to press these on and make sure that your adhesive side is down because you don't want to ruin your iron or your press. Um, and then I'm just going to kind of firmly press since we have two layers. Um, is that what you were talking about, Tracy, was the sewing school? It's a group. Um, it's a group here on Facebook and that's, um, I've been hanging out in there and it's a great place for questions or if you're a little bit more advanced, you can always hop in with answers, whatever you want. And then I'm also going to turn it over and press it this way too for just a minute. It doesn't take too long. And this, I, this works so good for the fleece. This, it wouldn't work as, it doesn't work as well on like a full quilt, but for tiny projects like this, I love this for the fleece, the fusible fleece, or the heat and bond. Um, hi. So that's 
that's that. Okay, so we've pressed it now. And if you can find the right side, it doesn't really matter because it's just pink. I'm going to put my right sides together. So the back and the front. <coughs> and then um, that's pretty good. And then I'm going to use my clips. Hello, hello. Hi, everyone. Sorry, I have my camera just a little bit farther away today, so I can't really see your names. Um, <laughs> but I will. You know. If you've been here before, you know I'll be back. I get on after I'm done to say hi to everyone, just so that I can see everybody's faces <clears throat> and names. So this is overkill. You don't probably need that many clips, but just remember you're gonna you're gonna leave yourself a spot to turn it out, okay? And then if you've done the fleece right, which I kind of have, just use the outside edge of the fleece as your guide. Um, it's it's just called sewing school. Just just search for it, um, and it'll pop up. If you search for it in Facebook, it'll pop up. You can request to join and answer the questions or tell tell me that you saw it on the Facebook Live and I'll, I'll um, hi Nancy, and I'll approve you because I don't approve you if you don't answer questions because the spammers don't often take time to answer the questions. So, um, okay, so we're just gonna leave a spot open and then try and use this fleece as a guide. You can sew over the fleece. It's just a little bit thicker when you're gonna top stitch later. I'm doing really well, Nancy, thank you. So I'm just gonna sew around the circle. And I think I'm done with this for real now, this time. So I can get rid of it. And I think I'm done with that. Just make some room so we can see here. <clears throat> and these are my mini wonder clips, if you're gonna ask, because I usually, almost always, um, I almost always get asked that. They're just mini wonder clips, and there's a link for them in the blog post that's in the description of the video. Um, guys, make sure you share this video to your wall so that you can find it later, so that you're, if you're like trying to tell your friend about it, you're like, I can't find it, you'll have it on your wall um, to share. So this is pretty, it's the circle's big enough that you can kind of just turn, and you shouldn't have to pick up your needle and turn it, but if you find that it's not becoming circular, you can stop, pick up your needle, and turn your piece. Um, but this one seems to not be, doesn't need it too much. It's a pretty big circle. That's more for tight. I have that issue more when I have a tighter circle, smaller circle. so that it's about a quarter of an inch smaller, but I wasn't super successful, but it's not a huge deal. So it's fine. I'll go a little bit more. The trickiest part of these is getting it to, to line up, but I'm going to show you. Um, and you know what? I did it again. I, oh good. I am wearing black. So now I'm going to have thread all over me. Um, so two things, if you have them, I want you to use these to trim around your seam. These are just my pinking shears and try not to get the fleece because that's gonna dull your blade a bit. Try just to get the fabric. If you have too much fleece, like lift it up and use your regular scissors to trim it first because you don't wanna dull your pinking shears because they're harder to, to um, they're harder to, Sharpen, that's the word. That's that word exists. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, I know the word exists, I just can't find it. At what point are you like, this is no longer mom brain. I need to like go get my brain checked. Like because words are no longer there. <laughs> I'm sure it's just mom brain. Okay, so I've gone around and you can see I've still got my opening here. One more tip, just to make it look nice and professional. You don't have to do this. And I said I was done, but I lied. Because apparently I'm doing that today. Let's just take the opening here. And I'm just going to fold it under. 
so that it matches up with the seam. This will give me a nice, um, I want to have a better rounded edge. I'm going to press this and then I'll show you what I did. And this was pro is probably easier with, um, not with your fingers and a regular, if you have like a tiny iron, that would be a good, um, mom brain. Oh yeah. Mom brain totally exists. I just want to know when mom brain ends and, uh, like dementia sets in. <laughs> Do you ever get over mom brain? I'm not sure. So I'm just going to kind of press this edge under a little bit. This is the open edge where we're going to turn it out. And this is just, this will give you a little bit of a, a step up when you turn it out. So you don't have to like turn it under. Yes, thank you for answering questions. I can't really see. I need to figure out a better setup here. Um, so I'll show you. So this is the edge where I've turned it out. I mean, I've left it open. So this is my, the pad also comes, yes, it's separate, but it's right there. If you go to the Cricut store um, and buy the Easy Press, you will find it. It's right there. It's a pressing pad, it's called. So I've just pressed that little edge under so that when I turn it out, I'll already have it it's already ready to go because it's harder to press under when you're on the other side. And then here I'm going to just trim up my fleece because it's hard to press under. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to trim that fleece. Don't cut your fabric. That would be bad. I might have to pull it off a little bit, which is fine. This is just one of those things, because in my sewing group, I had somebody talking about making their stuff look a little bit more professional, and this is just one of those things that will kind of help do that. So I'm just gonna now press this, I'll show you up close here, just press it under a little bit so that I have that nice round edge, and when I turn it out, all I have to do is top stitch rather than, oh my gosh, is it Denia, Denia? Oh, please don't tell me that, I want mom brain to go away so bad. <laughs> I'm like, I used to know big words. I used to know all the big words. I had all the good words. I did. I used to have good words. And now I'm like, uh, my dog. Yeah. Dog is a hard one for me to come up with. <laughs> just all words. Okay. So I'm just pressing that under and then I'm going to just use my press or your iron is fine. But I really like the press, guys. If you couldn't tell. I'm going to press that under. <clears throat> and this is my my little purple thing for when I don't want to burn my fingers off and scald them. So. And the most important part to this is right by the seam. That's the part I want you to super focus on getting it turned under a little bit. And it might not be perfect, but we do what we can. Okay, no, fine, turn it off. You can be a cranky pants. Okay. So, um, <laughs> oh, grandma brain. All right, so now we're ready to turn it out, and I'm just gonna push it right through and pull everything out like so. <clears throat> this purple guy is good for this again. Um, and unfortunately for me, we have like Alzheimer's and dementia in my family so grandma brain right into this is yeah into the just no brain sadness hi Libby um it's my Cricut easy press which is it's super fantastic so I'm just pressing my just trying to press my seams out here you can do most of it with your fingers um, like so, you can see, and we've got this spot, which we've hopefully got that pressed under a little bit, and then bring this guy under a little bit too. So now we're just going to close it up, and it's, this part is, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not going to take all the time that I should to make sure it's perfectly straight to make it into a circle, but right here is the hardest part to get straight, so just make sure you... There we go. Oh, that's good. That's good. Pin. If it's good, pin it. Clip it. Okay. <laughs> right where the seam starts and you have to turn. 
under is the part that's the hardest to make look like a circle. So if you can get those looking good, then you can hopefully manipulate the rest into circle shape. You could, um, you could totally get, um, you could totally get, do this in a square, not get. You could do these in a square, but the corners are hard to get right to. So no matter what you're doing, what shape you're doing, you're going to have to be patient with either the corners not looking perfect on a square or this little bit not being exactly as circular as everything else. Okay? So those are your choices. A rounded corner or a less than round closed bit. So you can kind of see I've got um, got it pinned, and like I said, I could spend 20 minutes trying to get it all perfect, which you should do, but I'm not going to make you watch me do it, if that makes sense, because you know, that's, that's just me. Okay, and if this isn't falling right, grab out your press again, hi Margaret, and press these edges, but mostly if you roll them with your fingers, and if you haven't got a lot of fleece in there like I do because I didn't take the time to make sure and cut it less than you want about a quarter of an inch smaller the fleece circle so that you don't have this problem but just roll it with your fingers and that fleece will come down if you kind of press on it and use your iron or your press as well for that to keep it flat okay and then we're just gonna top stitch all the way around and I did not get as much of the I didn't get my little, my little pink strip is barely on there. It's right, where is it? It's right here. I'm bummed I wanted that pink strip. I should have, okay. So I'm just going to top stitch that closed. And um, make sure you back stitch a little bit. Just to keep your seam. Okay, okay. And if you haven't done the extra layers of fleece like I have, your machine will be a little bit happier with you. Um, oh, I don't have any hope anyways. Don't worry about it. <laughs> you haven't killed my hope. I, uh, you know, I just, that's why I try really hard to do brain healthy things like not drinking soda and working out because it's, I know it's an eventuality for me, so I'm just trying to prolong it as long as I can, but I think just having the kids in general makes you lose like half your brain function. <laughs> and this hobby and the blog are also super good things for my brain, so you know, try to do sewing is good for you, having a, keeping your fingers busy and the creativity so that's why I try and foster all those things because really I just I guess it was two months ago I lost my grandpa who had Alzheimer's and uh, it's hard it's really hard but more you know for me this two months ago was more of a relief because he's kind of been gone for quite a while. So yeah, we're going heavy today, I guess. <laughs> I didn't mean to go all heavy on you guys. Um, but it happens. stitching just a little bit back and forth just to make sure that that stays in place oh thank you um like I said it was I've, I think you know with Alzheimer's you kind of I've been grieving for a few years just because you know he's been gone for a while if that makes sense he's a it's a relief now that he's not stuck in that body that wasn't wasn't him anymore so you know, what can you do? Okay, so, <clears throat> um, oh, you're getting snow, how pretty, but it's April, where is spring? 
I don't, I'm ready for spring. So like I said, this is the hardest part to get right and that's it's a little wonky because I didn't take as much time but you can stop and take a little more time when you do that. You could stop here and here's our coaster. Um, but I'm also, I'm just gonna add some quilting on the top. Super, I mean, I guess if you can call it quilting, super easy. Um, <clears throat> so I'm just gonna add some lines and I'll show you. I'm just gonna follow my scraps. And if you looked at the picture on the blog, you can see kind of see what I did there. I just followed the lines, um, almost like stitching in the ditch, but not exactly because I'm not going straight over the line. I'm just using the fabric lines as a guide. And I'll show you once I'm done. And since it's such a small piece and you don't want a lot of um, threads hanging off, I'm going to try and stop on this middle, this top stitch line that I've got and then sew along it to the next thing so that I don't have to pick up my thread and and cut every time so I don't I want as few extra threads hanging on as possible so I'm gonna try and stay on my piece rather than coming off the edge and cutting and doing more thread and guys I promise I will come back and chat with you in the comments afterwards I do love to chat, but then I know there's other people who are like, I just want to know how to make it. So. I have to try and make everyone happy. Which rarely happens, let's be honest. more in here you could do more fun things um, but I like this because then I don't have to put my quilting foot on and <laughs> and all that this is just straight line quilting which is easy and we've already got a guide so you could come back in with your quilting foot and you know stitch a name on it or whatever or you could do this in like your favorite sports team fabric and then you know and then stitch go blues on it because really that's the only sports team is the St. Louis Blues. Just saying. Okay. <laughs> or the cards, right? Okay. So then I'll show you. And th these are fun too because then the back has a fun design so you can use both sides. So here's the front. Um, here's the front. And I've just gone, you can see I've gone, sorry my nails, I need to fix them, but I've gone and just used the fabric as a, a line so you can see the straight lines that I've done and then the back since we did it it's kind of a fun design too um, so these are totally reversible so <clears throat> that's it and take your time on here um, yeah go cards right go blues where's that go blues um, <laughs> um, so do your straight lines right like that or you could just quilt all around like we've done before like the um, See, word's gone, whatever that is. The stippling, you could stipple quilt it um, around. Just, you'd have to switch to your quilting foot. There's lots of options. You can do these without scraps. Just do them, um, yeah, do a zigzag over the seams. There's so many cats. Get out of here, girl. <laughs> um, you could, you could um, do the zigzags. Yeah, great Christmas gift. These would be good for a housewarming. Put them with a bottle of wine and some wine glasses or some coffee cups and some coffee. Um, these would be super good. So the link is in the description and I'm going to go in right now and put in the rest of the pictures. I just, um, no, seriously, go. Shelly, why are you still here? <laughs> I kid, of course, of course, of course. So um, you could do so many different options. Just do one fabric and then put like an initial on it with heat and bond as an applique. There's so many, so many things you could do. Um, but I like this because it kind of uses up my scraps and I like all my fat, all my favorite pretty fabrics right together, which I like. Um, so go pin that if you want to stay this, share this video to your wall so you can find it later. Um, I'm going to come back through and answer your comments and we can chat more in the comments. Join sewing group if you want to. Um, just search sewing school, not sewing group, sewing school. Um, yes, I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Next week, if you're curious, we're going to do, it's going to be all about making quilt binding. Um, so we're going to do that next week. So make sure you, I guess, like Jennifer set an alarm because apparently Facebook is being wonky and not giving you notifications. So 10 a.m. Central next week, I will be here. We'll be doing quilt binding. 
and um, I think that's it. But I'm hanging out in the sewing school, and I'm also hanging out a lot on Twitter right now, um, which is fun. So it's just sew to leash on Twitter if you're on Twitter. And um, that's it. I think that's it. I mean, I gave you like 20 things to do, so you've got lots of homework. <laughs> um, but, and if you make these, I always love to see photos, so just share them on my page. You can do a visitor post right on So With Alicia. I love to see it. So, thanks for being here, guys, and I will see you next week.